Hello guys, welcome back. Game number two between Hellraisers and Alliance is kicking off now. We're getting things underway. Let's head straight into the draft. There's, there's no point beating around the bush. We had some shenanigans in game number one, a little bit of a uh, little bit of an interesting situation. But let's see if game number number two we can get things all settled down. Charlo is now standing in fully for Alpha Ninja, but Slash. Game number two, this is uh, Alliance's chance to get a win under their belt and start pushing up to the top part of that group stage. Yeah, I think in terms of individual skill, there's pretty much no difference between those two teams. But eventually, you know, Spectre time hits and you're kind of screwed if you don't have anything that can really go up against her. So I think Hellraisers, they <laughs> made it a bit more difficult than it should have been. Um, I personally still doubt the Mask of Man is a little bit on the Spectre and then they had this one really awkward fountain dive. Which has prolonged the game for like 20 minutes, I think. Uh, should have should have, should have been game, set, match uh, at that point. But alas, it wasn't. And uh, Loda being a bit mad, fully understandable here. I mean, they were on the losing end. It really didn't matter, you know. How, it was it, it was a losing game after all. For is as long as they didn't screw up early, yeah. Alliance are going to lose anyway, and then the game just, you know, just prolongs for no reason, essentially. Well, you know, with, with pauses like that, I mentioned it during the game, but it, a lot of it comes down to your, you know, player tempo, but I don't think Alliance are going to have an issue with that whatsoever this game. Nice stalker is their pick up there, a hero that likes to set the dynamic of the game to his, uh, to his pace, and... We'll see what they do with that. Scarus was a second pick up as they ban out the Zeus and Wisp. Troll and Sniper with the bans out from Hellraiser's Storm. Not picked up until it gets banned out right there from HR. And what are we looking at next? You've got some pretty decent support still in the pool. But core hero-wise, I'd, I'd kind of think that Alliance would look to ban out a couple of offlaners here. You know, maybe, maybe the Clockwork, something along those lines. Because... Banning supports is inc it's incredibly difficult. You can think, okay, well, Rubik is going to work well here against our our draft, and it's going to really annoy us. Uh, a farming Sand King, you know, it's not really going to fit into Hellraiser's lineup, but ranged supports like Rubik, Witch Doctor, Lion, m maybe a Lion ban thrown in there could work out, but offlane is super simple to ban out. Yeah, I mean, for Alliance, I think the Skyward second figure is a bit of a deny if to isn't just, okay, I dare you to play Phoenix. Um... I mean, they probably don't want to waste a ban on it. I mean, Phoenix plus Trend is still a very potent combination overall. They could, in theory, still pick the Phoenix and then just have him as a support so he doesn't have to lane against Gareth. But, I mean, Dread is normally their support player after all, so it's definitely an option. Chen getting banned out, and something that Hellraiser like to do with Mac SF and then Chen push Strat. It's something they really do like. Alpha Ninja not here to play the SF, but pretty sure Charge can do his very best Alpha Ninja SF impression as well. And, let's see what uh, he does. Yeah. yeah, let's see how, how, how well he does on the hero. Indeed, Batrider being banned out. He, it was the big playmaking hero after all for Alliance last game. I mean, his pickoffs really uh, secured them the mid game for a long time, but they couldn't close it out, which is unfortunate. Uh, but let's see if Alliance are going to go once again for this early aggression lineup. Looks like it with Skyward, Night Stalker, and they've picked the Phoenix themselves. Banning out the Chen so they don't want that early pushing aggression from, you know, like a, a mech Shadow Fiend with Treant Living Armor. Just uh, going in and destroying a whole bunch of your towers early on into the game. Um, Hand of God is obviously going to be annoying as well if you are, like you said, going for the early aggression. Nice Stalker running in. If he can't chase someone down and kill them on his own, the Hand of God obviously going to be playing up against that. It gets a little bit difficult. Broodmother is the fourth ban there from Alliance. And when you've got a, a timing hit, because they're not going to be aggressive from, you know, level one. Sure, they might have Scarlet Mage harassing people down. They'll, they'll play their lanes out as strongly as they can. But they're not going to be diving towers and making rotations at level one. If, uh, when this timing hits, sort of, uh, you know, level four to six, we're looking at the Night Stalker, maybe level three for the Scarlet Mage, depending on, you know, who they put where, the Broodmother could start just completely taking over the game at that point. So uh, I like that ban. Also kind of indicates that their support heroes will not have any uh, any creep clearing capabilities. So maybe they just go out all full out onto, onto solo target here. I don't know how well that's going to work out, to be honest. I mean, Alliance, Night Stalker, maybe solo mid. It's, I think it is, after all, his most common position, although I've seen NIP run support Night Stalker quite a few times with Hanskin on Night Stalker. Maybe even do an offlane Night Stalker, it's possible. Hellraisers, their disruptor, did serve them faithfully last game, and really a big factor in their win. I mean, even that really last, very, very last glimpse to kill Loader in the end to secure the game. And of course, a huge ass static zone to three targets when the lines were going for the base. 
So Hellraiser is definitely comfortable with the hero. He combos nicely with the Trent Protector as well. It's a good support duo. Yeah, very nice. Very nice indeed. So they've got that displacement from Disruptor, like you said, Treant with the Living Armor. Their lanes, though, I I'm not sure about this. Shadow Fiend, uh, well, I I'm, I'm looking at this and thinking, okay, Shadow Fiend mid, Disruptor and Treant, they'll be the safe lane supports. But doesn't that just leave you a little bit weak in the mid game? Disruptor and Treant, sure, they've got decent skill sets there with a Static Storm and Overgrowth. We've seen how well that they can function as a support duo. But if you're being dived under towers, Glimpse is going to send Nice Stalker back. You're still going to get chased down by, you know, Arcane Bolt, Concussive Shot. Have this Mystic Flare thrown at you. And Phoenix, I'm still wondering if this is going to be off lane. Nico has played it in the past. Or do you consider actually running the four roll Phoenix or, or even the dual lane off lane Slada. with something like an, an, an Ogre? Something along those lines? Slada picked up there for, for Loda, which makes me think that the last pick is most likely going to be another support for fucking Mad here. Yeah, bring back the fish. I mean, you know that I'm rather fond of the hero. I think he's great, but I don't know. He kind of fulfills the same role as Night Stalker. It's, it's a bit hard, I think. Slada, I mean, I like seeing him pick the role, but uh, the limitations of the hero are rather obvious. Once again, our lines have no real push. Like, neither of the two cores are particularly... Well, three cores, if you count the Phoenix, are particularly good at it. Skyrath is pretty crap at it as well. Maybe they remedy it by picking like last week's Shadow Shaman or something. But otherwise, their team fight isn't that impressive either. Hmm. Not quite sure. I think Night Stalker in combination with Slana might but be a bit too much here. Yeah. Oh well. Well, we'll we'll see what things you know, see how things pan out. There their single target focus is pretty damn strong, though. They are going oh, yeah. the that I was uh, that I was thinking for Alliance. They got Blink Slaughter, Jump In, Crush, Amplified Damage. But where does the physical damage come from? Nice Stalker Slaughter alone. It, it's really nice, you know, having a long ranged hero to just slowly but surely whittle them down with the Amplified Damage, reducing their armor. So uh, I, I'm not too sure here. I'm not too sure at all. Support Night Stalker, and then you get another hero mid lane. Maybe. Possible. Yeah, that, that's def that, that is a possibility, yeah. Yeah, you're right. But then who plays it? Does Effing Mad play the support Night Stalker? I guess. I'm pretty sure Arke is going to be on Skyrest duty. Yeah, dead. Oh, that's, that's a given. Yeah, <laughs> that is his, one of his heroes, definitely. But Hellraiser's come back with a Juggernaut. So safe lane Jug farming up away on that top lane with Trident Disruptor supporting him. The Mask of Madness and Phase Boots build is just so ridiculously good. You know, Phase Boots into the Morbid Mask, Quelling Blade, Ring of Basilius, and then Mask of Madness to finish off. Turn on the bas uh, turn on the Bassy, push out the lane, use the Quelling Blade and just auto attack the Creep Wave to get it into that tier 1 tower, which slowly but surely chips away at the damage. Then you just go back and take down large camp, medium camp, run back into the lane, and you amplify your damage by, you know, like 40%. It's pretty nuts. Well, yeah, that's pretty good. Death Prophet! Oh, I was... Well, that that's the hero I was looking for, you know? Ranged really does utilize the amplified damage. Yeah. But mid-Death Prophet? We haven't seen this hero in such a long time. So Phoenix She's still really powerful. I was just waiting for a return. Like, I'm a big fan of Alliance's draft. I'm a bit doubtful of the support Night Stalker. Oh, I uh, think it's a support Stalker. Uh, I, I actually wonder whether it's going to be, you know, offlane Night Stalker. Support Phoenix. Support mm. Phoenix. I feel that yeah. works a little bit better. Yeah, because Phoenix is not that great against Glimpse, after all. So it might, might be the case, indeed. But Death Prophet really benefits from Amplified Damage, and... Uh, I think it's time to, to make a big comeback. So I hope Alliance's drought works out. Well, yeah. Uh, you, when you look at her nerfs over time, it was all to do with exorcism. It got mm -hmm. increased from, what, 115 to 135? Or something along those lines. You know, it was increased by about 20 seconds. But that was pretty much it. She still dominates the lane with her Crypt Swarm. She's still got an AoE 5 or 6 second silence, which is absolutely nuts. And she's still a pretty quick little, uh, little Banshee, you know, running around with that... With that witchcraft, she's not slow on her feet at all. And then no, the optimization you go on her, you just tank up beefy as all hell, take down towers. Oh, definitely. I think Death Prophet, she's been nerfed a few times, but mostly to, to as I said, cold onto the ultimate. That, but the hero is still really strong because people have forgotten about it. So, I mean, Dota is a game of trends after all. You know, sometimes you see one hero trending, and like, um, two weeks afterwards, he's completely out of fashion. Uh, so it's good to see Alliance bring him back. Uh, 
Well, it was kind of post TI4 meta, really. During TI4, she wasn't even picked that much. Uh, but it was really right after TI4 where we saw Death Prophet getting rising to, towards prominence. And then at some point, just fading into obscurity. Well, well, well. Heading into the game, Pycat mid Death Prophet. Nico will be playing the offlane Phoenix with Mad on the Night Stalker. So it will be a four roll Night Stalker here. Okay, playing the Scarath Mage while Loda has uh, gone AFK a little bit. Is on the slaughter while over on the side of the dire Hellraisers, Dread Sand King, four roll Sand King, Shalchlo playing the mid Shadow Fiend, Gorats again on this Treant, but it looks like he is going to be an actual offlane Treant this time, right? Because Godam's on the on the support uh, disruptor. You could have offlane Sand King, Ally uh, Yoki, and he's been he's been uh, toying with that one. And yep. Looking yep. at the item build, it looks like that's the way they're going to go. Yeah, Star Chill. So Dread is uh, playing Corals now, apparently, or, or is it just? Uh, the case of I don't know because of Trent and Dread really doesn't like playing Trent. <laughs> I I maybe that's it, because the the first couple of times I saw Hellraiser pick up Trent, they sent him off lane for Goretz and Goretz was the guy playing it, and they didn't really put it anywhere other than other than off lane. So uh, maybe mm. maybe that maybe that is the case. Dread hates the crap out of Trent, says no, it's a boring hero. I'm not going to play it. So he heads up into the core role instead. Safe lane trial in here from Alliance up against the. Uh, the potential aggro try from Hellraisers. <laughs> Come on, Chorus, who are you kidding? <laughs> Lord of already saw you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a tree, you know. He's pretending to be one of these normal trees. Even though he's walking around, you don't expect him to hit you with 85 damage to the face. No, he's just buying time for... I mean, they, they stuck out it as an inventory, so they know he's got an observable. It's just a matter of where he's going to place it. Does that one block out the camp? That he just placed? It um, should, right? I'm not sure. I've, I've seen all the ones, you know, sort of around here and here and mm. here, and the sentry placed over here, and then all the regular spots. I don't know about that one, actually. We'll see. Well, we'll find Arcus out soon got enough. Two choices. Bounty Rune picked up by Death Prophet and Shadow Fiend there. The mid hero's taken up that as mad. Yeah, Dread, you Dread, you're not oh, winning that. Oh, the trades are not good. <laughs> Here for Dread up on this top rune spot. Mad still chasing him with level one void. Dread kind of has to skill something up, and it's—I don't know—you don't—you don't, you don't want to go sandstorm here, do you? Well, he's gonna have to lane against Phoenix man. either way. It's, it's Boots first Night Stalker after all. Oh man, Dread. not fun. Really not fun. Are you okay, Dread? He drops <laughs> down to 200 HP. He's still got Salvans. And a whole bunch of tangos, though. It's just yeah. not the start you really want. Down on bot lane. We're Aggro try. Aggro try against the dual lane here. Because they've got Mad in this roaming Night Stalker, it's actually Loda and Arke playing this dual lane safe lane against the Disruptor, Treant, and Juggernaut. Hmm. Got him once again going for level 1 Kinetic Field. Seems to be a standard thing to do. Gor is already completely out of mana. So using one Leech Seed and... Well, looks like I missed it. So did I. So did I. Mad comes really in with a kill it. onto Shadow Fiend. Pycat with a level 1 Crypt Swarm. His level 2 skill not taken up yet, but it's going to go into the Crypt Swarm. Like, there's, yeah. there's no point going into anything else. The extra damage is always going to be useful here. Push out the wave, yeah. control the runes. Let's take a race to the face. And meanwhile, bot lane getting whacked there. Loader kind of underestimating the damage that can come out from the tree. And gets caught in the kinetic fields. Artist also, of course, going for the blade tree to dodge the crush, and everything's peachy. Yeah, Matt does return down here to try and bolster this, uh, bolster this safe lane. Oh, after after the DDoS and pause, my brain has melted a little bit. Apologies for missing the first two kill guy kills, guys. I'll try to switch on. Time to time to focus. Yeah. And you know, I was talking about losing tempo in the past game for players. It's it's kind of the same thing, but nevertheless, we'll we'll see what we can do. Nice stalker, match go down to this bot lane. Boots first. He's deterring Hellraisers from being too aggressive down here. The fact that Juggernaut is getting close to the creep wave is, is a little bit too tight, really. Artez with the stout shield, even though he's getting ballsy. Where's the ranged harass? Where's Arke? He's actually pretty far away. Godam and Goretz getting into position here, looking for the Skyrath. They think he's pulling, they think he's doing something, but they're not going to find him. And I didn't see if that Observer Ward blocks up, because the Sentry came out from Arke and got rid of that little ward. Yeah, good play overall there. I mean, they were just trying to prevent the Skyrath from going, coming towards the lane, but overall, I think Alliance's Trident is decent enough. I mean, Artis only has a level 1 Blade Fury, Magica, 
Can you get a little bit there? Uh, got him? Ooh, the cross oh, misses, Loda misses the cross. And now, Loda spin to win spin from away. Artes. Glorious victory for the Juggernaut there as they come out of this troy lane two for one. Sure enough, first blood went the way of the Radiant towards mid lane. But when Loda's not going to farm on this really item reliant hero Slada, things are looking rough. Juggernaut, sure, he's not in that free farm position where he's getting Mask Man's face boost by nine minutes into the game. He's not going to be dipping back into the jungle, but still. He's getting a lot done down on this bot lane, and they can tr transition things Oh, around. top lane? <laughs> the load is actually... Oh, okay. This is the crush completely in Nikwa. Dresco level and 2 borrow strike. Red. His sandstorm's on cooldown. Back down towards bot though. Magicka's gonna go second. down to the spin. Back to top. Look at me. No. Look at this. Look at you. It's like an Old Spice commercial going on right here, right now. Hell raises against the Lions, but overall, Magicka going down on that bot lane and nothing happening too much at top. No, Loader has just said, screw this, I've given up. Yeah. Night Stalker Roman did work out in the very first two minutes, but now it's kind of weak in terms of their lanes. Looks like Nikwa is just supporting him for the time being. He did pick up a TP though. So it's probably going to pick up level 5 from the creep and then TP towards spot lane. I guess. Or maybe he's just going to roam. He's going to control top rune. But Pike is already there. Well, up at top. They're sending a couple of heroes here. The top rune getting given over to Pycat, but it's just a little illusion rune, not nothing too much. The first night, as Mad spots out Godow, he's got level 2 glimpse, he's got kinetic field, and there's no real way for Mad to actually chase him down and do too much damage. Does ping out, but how's Shadowson doing at this mid lane? He's died once, but he's still keeping up to, up to, up to pace with that Death Prophet's last hits. It's kind of, yeah, as ever, it's just that type of hero, and... Mads currently rotating towards top lane. Does he have silence? No, he doesn't. He's only level three and nice dodge by Dread. Yeah, this I mean, is the no build we're seeing from support Night nice Stalkers. You don't go for your, your silence early on at all. You kind of go for this 4-0-4 build. Get as much nuke power as you can, but then the Hunter in the Night, so you can just continually chase and force people back when they're trying to defend towers. Silence, you know, you kind of think, okay, the value point is worth it. But the mobility and damage you get just from Void and Hunter is, is really super good. <laughs> Still waiting, we're in my mid lane. Do they want to go by on Pike? Yep, there's a glimpse. One race. Pike that. Second. Oh, he misses the oh. second one. One more right click will actually bring him down. And it's Charles got him. Finding still, kill, still waiting, top lane, top lane, lane dread. Borrow strikes available as well as Sandstorm. He goes through Loader, but Loader's getting no ready for the crush. Dread has no mana left, and the okay. crush misses again. Loader not having a great time here as Nikwa tanking up the tower, but they've got a full creep wave as well as Catapult to try and chip away at this HP. God damn. Not sure this is where you want to go. Nice Stalker's behind you, and Magic comes in. Another crush is no, not no available, but he's still uh, probably not gonna royally yeah. screwed. Yep. Underestimating the damage they can really come out there. So another TP to us, top lane that should be Dread going back to us the lane. And Loader uses the clarity. And this has opened up the map really for the, or opened up the lane for the Juggernaut. He's got Basilius, he's got 900 gold, he can go straight into phase boots now if he wants to. But you're basically giving this off lane Juggernaut complete free farm. While, yeah. while your farm at top lane is being contested by a Sand King and Disruptor, farm mid, the Shadow Fiend's doing an excellent job there. He's 32 for 8 right now. So. But Phoenix and Slada are sharing farm essentially. Yeah, top lane, sprint being popped there, can you land the crush this time? Not Dread, he's gonna borrow strike across the trees. Regen rune for Shachlo towards this bot lane. Spam out a couple of raises, make sure he gets the most value he can in that attack. One more race? Yeah, <laughs> he's this is out of the regen rune though. Nevertheless, tier 1 tower bot's gonna be the first one to fall. Yeah. Mad still causing havoc. Mid lane goddamn, he's... Probably wants to go for the kill, where's Pycat? He needs the creep wave to come back in, and now they're gonna go for the dive. Yeah. Magicka spots him out, glimpsed yeah. back, but oh, into nice. a better <laughs> position. That's perfect for him. Nice looking finds the kill as Pycat is getting right click down. Is there any rotation from the bot lane? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look well, like it at all. There's a wandering tree stumbling towards him, but he's kind of slow. Yeah. <laughs> Trees are not so good with motion after all. I drink from my feet, you know. Such such a big reference to Lord of the Rings. So <laughs> <laughs> of course, he's, he's a trim. What, what do you expect? Red Lotus cross crush. Sandstorm's doing plenty of damage though, and they know he's got Barrow Strike. Lotus is really low. He's gonna yeah, sprint. he's going to away. And he'll be just fine. But, uh, I'm a bit concerned though, overall. I mean, the Slada is heavily unfarmed. 
and especially in comparison to the Juggernaut. Well, last hit wise, Dyer taking a slight lead here. Sand King's the only core hero that's really lagging behind uh, a tiny bit. Level wise, though, Dyer with a level 8 Shadow Fiend. The three level 6s, and, well, two level 6s, one level 7 on the Radiant are uh, trumping the two level 6s over on the Dyer, but. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's Hellraiser's coming out slightly on top, I feel. Big difference. Nice Stalker, 2000 net worth, Triant, 1700. Skarath down there with 750. What are we looking at overall? Hellraiser's 1000 net worth lead and about 500 experience wise, but at this stage, you know, laning phase is is starting to dissipate. You're starting to get these rotations across, you're getting heroes moving around. The farming time is starting to slow down. This is really not what Loader wants. He wants his big item. He wants a, a, a Midas or, or a Blink or something. Yo, Pycat wants a Yule Scepter to save him from this. But the Blade Fury with the, uh, with the Leaf Seed will take him down. No stack here. Shadowfiend comes in and says, hey, hey, where's the stack? Where's the stack? But there's not going to be anything there for him to steal. Oh, okay, needs to be careful. But he's got boots and he's really speedy as well. So Should be okay. Nico can also dive. Like, if they want to charge him, they could and then glimpse him back. Mid lane, Nico, yeah, he's taken back in, but he mm. dives himself away. I was watching up the top, actually. Loader chasing down Dread, amplified up. The sprint forward, but Dread is super ballsy. With level 2 in the Barrow Strike and 3 in Sandstorm, he's he's not really too worried. Like, Loader goes forward. Crush, okay. Amplified damage, fine. And then what? And then what? I'm going to Barrow Strike into the oh, trees. No, strike. Dread, what, what are you doing? He's, he's got, got six, six charges. charges. Okay, yeah. he's fine. Yeah, glimpse up in a few seconds if they want to glimpse him back, but there are no further TPs coming. So, HR, they're going to be happy that they already took down two tier one towers. Something that Alliance can really only dream of right now. How do they take down towers outside of the Death Prophet Ultimate? Mm -hmm. that, that, that is pretty much the only way. Whereas Hellraiser's, you know, Shadowfiend, Juggernaut, they've got the right click physical attack damage there to do it. Slardar, okay. His attack damage is not too bad, and now he'll show it off with Godam. Amplified up. The TP coming in from Gorats. He's not level 6, though. The Supernova will be pretty good here. Down onto the tree and Disruptor as Gorats. Man, they can see you. Loader. Why, Lo why Loader? did Loader go for it? I think Pathing screwed him up a little bit. Maybe. Well, he's probably going to die to the Fire Spirits. Oh, the last one misses. He's on 5 uh, HP. Oh, uh, another dive in 27 trends. seconds. He can't get it. He can't yeah. get it. Oh, wow. Super close. But yeah. I'm pretty sure Loader got screwed by passing because there were sort of creeps here. He tried to mm. run and then his hero sort of doubled back and then ran forward and then doubled back. But I'm not, I'm not sure. Not 100% sure. Midas done for that, uh, for that Phoenix up on top lane while Loader, he's 500 gold away from his Blink Dagger. Artis? Getting mad popping. Well, okay, there's yeah. a hasted the, Sand King yeah, running around. The, uh, that's the first thing I saw. I didn't see Artis. I just looked down. I saw the hasted Sand King sort of... Skittering about, running around. Top lane, Loader is probably going to get screwed. One, One race, race to start things off. Glimpse well, is available he's to bring back, but Thunder Strike should finish him off. The Strength Tread Switch is not going to help you. But he tried his best. Yeah. Kind of hard to do anything there, Dread. going to be posturing up towards bot lane, just annoying Matt a little bit. Is there going to be a Midas on the Night Stalker? Looks like it. He's saving off gold. I, I don't see why not. I don't see why not at all. We're seeing this from a lot of offlane heroes nowadays. Especially if the rest of your team goes slightly behind. And the fact that, you know, Loader is in the same kind of boat, I'd kind of like to see him do the same thing. Oh, Epicenter being popped there, Matt! One more hit, slow Dread, slow down, but he's got the Tranquil Boots. Can he keep up? Yep, he can. Dread takes down the kill. Zombie Slash will pop Nequa. One more hit, but Artez is caught behind the tier two. Loader chasing him down, and okay. With Pike out here, that's going to be pretty damn simple. Yeah. Casual Russian dive. Behind the tier 2? Why the hell not? Oh yeah, why not? I mean, it's, 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 it's a very common occurrence, I think. Both in competitive and in pubs. Top lane? It's okay. Space Sh creative, they're taking down the tower. Yep. Shashlo and Goretz on this tier 1, as well as Godam actually, who comes in from the side. Oops. Level 6 as well, so that's pretty nice. Peeing in Magka. I, I'm pretty sure you let the tower fall and then you take the creep wave when it reaches, you know, wherever yeah. it does, here. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's gonna, that's gonna secure his Midas if he gets all of these creeps. I'm taking him up to that. Slaughter, where are you hiding? Yeah, he's going blink. He's going blink. Picks that one up for himself. Okay, mid lane. Goretz is invis and scouting people out. Places an observer ward down just to give them that little bit of vision between ancient camps and mid lane. Yeah, and Dread being a bit annoyed. I mean, Pike or you Took down one of the the big creep there, the alpha wolf. 
got a DD rune as well. He's not going for the straight Yule Scepter, but instead buffing out his stats a little bit there by bra going Bracer. Not sure what NS is saying there. I, mean, I, mean, I've, I have no idea. Absolutely <laughs> no idea whatsoever. But mm. Mad, he's got his Midas done. He'll send that out to him as well. Some dust. He's sick and tired of the Sand King going invisible into that little sandstorm. And you've got double Midas so far. Loader probably goes for the trip Midas after his Blink Dagger, so he'll start building into that. You, you do have to keep your farm rate really going as, as this team right now. And Pycat, 1600 gold up on him. He's got the Brace and Null just to pad out his stats a little bit. Oh, what, what do you Blink gonna him? get revealed mid, I think. There's a smoke slaughter. Oh, yeah. Hello, Dread. Oh, yeah. Dread, living armor, but Silent Stop can't burst strike or anything away. As Shashla comes in with a double raise, Mystic Flare is thrown out by Arke to seal the deal down onto that Sand King. Goretz. Slowed, burning, and Shachlo now in a pretty awkward spot, hiding in the trees, wants to Requiem out. Will landed on a couple of heroes, Magica does get taken down, and Supernova... That's an oh, awkward oh. Supernova. <laughs> Shortly after. That's a level Us. 8 Phoenix. Yep. Pycat, yeah, they don't see him. But they might just go for Roshan afterwards. Well, the Creeper kind of runs into him, but yeah. <laughs> They don't really care. Amplified damage, they, I think they spotted it out. But it doesn't look like Alliance going to be there in time, are they? Have we seen Exorcism used by PyCat yet? Nope. No. And I don't know if they'll be in time. They could run in there with PyCat. He's actually TPing back to base, no. so that's a big fat nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. There's die advantage, and then with the Quelling Blade on the Juggernaut as well, and level 1 Presence of the Dark Wolf from SF is an easy Roche takedown. Looks like SF Mech into Manta. Yeah, it's, it's a good item this game though. Manta is really good. It can dispel many, many things. Two silences from Nightstalker and Skyrath and the Amplify damage. Actually, three silences if you count the Crobulus oh, as yeah, well. Oh yeah, of course. Plenty of things there for him. Magic Girls along, along with Arke, Pycat and Loda smoking up and heading towards this middle lane. But the only person they really see is Goddamn this Disruptor. Time and time again, they're fighting these pickoffs, but it's not on key heroes. The silence goes oh, down, nice so Godam can't land anything. Yeah. He was, oh, Dust. Oh, Dust not, oh, didn't hit him. Wow. That was close. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was pretty sure that landed. And when you look at Dread, he's running in now with a Burrow Strike ready. Pycat, two-man Burrow Strike down onto both. Ake drops the Juggernaut's Omni Slash. And Artes lands himself a pretty sweet double kill as Mad. Stick charges, one more swipe will seal that one. Triple that also kill. gives a blink dagger of to Dread, triple kill to Artez, who's now sitting at what, 12, 1300 gold. That's pretty good, and let the death ball start. Mech SF <laughs> on the prowl. Let the fun begin. Mech Shadowfiend going into these towers, as, as well as the healing wall, you know. It's yeah. always that combination I look for. When you see the Shadowfiend along with the Juggernaut, you kind of know it's death ball time. Regardless of the other heroes, it could be Earthshake, it could be Witch Doctor, Lion, whatever. You know they're going to go into towers. <laughs> Loader picks up a glass of haste, probably for Minus, which I think is the correct choice, by the way. I mean, they kind of have to. If they can't get any items on the slaughter, they're not going to win this game. Um, oh. Blink Crush. On to Artes. Oh. He doesn't have okay. any Mortal. Shadowfiend's the one with that. Static Storm and Epicenter not really catching too many heroes. They got RK, but it has the, has the five roll support. And now Shadowfiend is in a rough situation. Tries to Requiem, but doesn't get it off in time. Stunned up, and Artez silenced now. Runs Ooh, back, Exorcism. Act. One more hit, and gonna get... No! He gets it! Pycat now fighting with the Supernova. Will drop to Goddamn Dread returns. The Burrow Strikes will cool down for a couple seconds, but that's what, two for one so far. Maybe if Alliance can oh, find a few more. Great Burrow Strike! Strikes. Dread finding Mad and finding Nico with one more raise. That was a good trade to start from Alliance, but in the end... Dread comes back in with 10 stick charges and says, Okay, you've Hello, had enough fun, boys. boys. Big Daddy's here. Yeah, I attempted glimpse there from Garden, but it's night time, so I couldn't really get sight of the Skyrath. And in the end, HR still come out ahead, courtesy of the Aegis on the SF. And a big play there by Dread. I think he's pretty comfortable there on the offlane row. Yeah, he's, well, you know, he was safely in this game. And what was ah, he last time? Stuff. <laughs> what, what was he last time? He was uh, the Phoenix. Oh, yeah. He yeah, had a really good game in the early stages. Yeah, yeah like... he had an excellent game on that Phoenix. So yeah. he's got his Blink Dagger, 800 gold, uh, incoming. There's a whole bunch of stuff on his courier. So Blink goes to Tree. Treant's got Blink Dagger. Uh, Godam has a point booster. So Disruptor's building into that Aghanim Scepter. And then Shashlo's Yasha. Okay. 
My brain slowed down for like three seconds there. I was like, hang on, which which hero's god am? I looked up at the heroes like, is he Treant? Is he Disruptor? Oh, Smoke Gang, not again. Loader. Hello. But Goodbye. Yeah, look, who, who do they find? Do they find Shadow Fiend? Nah. Do they find Jonah? Slash. Nah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Loader Blink in three. Artez, can you get in range? No, the creep's blocking oh. him out. Oh, <laughs> that's annoying. MVP dire creeps. Please comment. Yeah. Or Co report for treachery. Co Command or report. Your choice, guys. <laughs> oh, man. 18 minutes into this game, 11 to 17. Dread on this safe lane sand king. 1, 3, and 4. Blink dagger, and it looks like he's going into that yours as his next item. Uh, I don't see it being anything bigger than that. Yule step to Venus. It's, it's a great item to pick up on a, on a sand king like this. You can use yourself up and blink out if they the see the Night Stalker. Field. Oh, buddy. Hello. Matchka stunned race, up. The two race. Oh, never mind. Got cancelled by the mini stun on Void. But still. Four roll Night Stalker. Yeah, sure, they killed Disruptor up at top, but who gives a damn? Killing this Night Stalker is a lot more important. The fact that he's not keeping the momen mem uh, momentum going. M -m 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 meme. Momentum. He's got a Midas, which he's not using. Sure, it's on cooldown now, but. As soon as he gets back up, uh, creep camps are going to be cleared. Artis, where are you running? He's he's looking. He's hunting for someone. Spotted out, though, by Magica. Yeah, they had the observer what spotting him out, so they know exactly where he is. Loader, bit of an awkward spot. Might try to go for the blink crush into Skyra's ulti once again, but seeing the support now behind Artis, I'm going to think twice of it. That's an ultimate orb on the courier. For Shadow Fiend, right? No, for the oh, Juggernaut. There's a full yeah. Manta for the Shadow Fiend, though. That's good. Well, overall, so net worth for the Shadow, Shadow Fiend, 11,000. Closest competitor, Death Prophet with 6.3. Just finished a yeah. Yule Scepter. So you can definitely see that the gap for HR is pretty, pretty massive right now. 10k net worth lead, experience-wise, same story exactly. They have taken out uh, the majority of the tier... Uh, one or two towers. There's one yeah. remaining right now as they take this one down on bot lane. All of their fights have worked out uh, pr you know, pretty well. They're gonna force the TPs back there. I mean, they see the Death Warrior using Exorcist in top lane, so that means they, they can't use it in the fight. I think that was a misplay there by Pycat. Oh man, the Glyph is on cooldown as well. Shachlo goes up to high ground. He wants to be a little bit careful, you know. No Aegis Immortal, there's no swap or anything like that, sure. Dread can blink in with an Epicenter. They've got Blink on Guards as well with the Overgrowth. So they do have abilities to to hold the lights. Oh, that, that, that's the mantra delivered. They should win every single fight, though. I think they don't have exorcism. That's the big damage source at the moment. A bit con okay. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, I, I guess you're expecting static the blink forward, and you want to preempt it. But maybe that's the alliance. It's time to strike. Tier three dropped to 741 HP, about half. Mm. While HR. Uh, do they prep to go in for more? Do they wait for the next Roshan? You know, uh, in, at this moment, you can go back and farm the Radiant Jungle and just choke them out. But taking... Well, they, they want to find a pickup first, but Mad is really, really fast, though. They have an Observer Ward in their own base, in fact. Yeah. Seeing the rotation of the Juggernaut. Static They're Storm really off cooldown in 56 seconds. Amplified damage thrown out by a loader. Basically, just get vision of as many heroes as you can. You can still manta it out once, once they go towards high ground. Though. They still want to fight. They know Exorcism is still on cooldown. They see Pike at mid as well. Oh. Well, where's the blink? Where's the jump? Where is Alliance's impetus to actually go in here and fight? The courier, what's it delivering? Manta for Artez uh, now. He can split out of Amplify as well. Glyph comes back off cooldown. That's pretty nice. But there is a catapult and a healing ward. Blink Mad. forward by Goritz. Mad. Held in place by the Overgrowth. Thunderstrike's not going to be enough. Good blink crush as Artez gets taken out by the Mystic Flare. Not quite enough as Dread somehow uh, doesn't get his blink out and doesn't go into the enemy oh team. Good. Artez though, Omni Slash, Loader. Loader, Nikwa jumping back and forth, but silenced up as Artez is now up shit creek without a paddle. The paddle though is thrown to him by the Trian, but it doesn't save him from the torrent of damage coming out of Alliance. The, oh boy. the Supernova. Yeah, proving to be disastrous right here for Hellraisers. Pushing high ground a little bit too soon. Dread tries to escape, but without that, without that Static Storm, it's just not good enough. Their damage yep. output is fine. They can take down towers, but sustained damage-wise, they didn't even use Exorcism. That's, that's the yeah. kicker, really. 
yeah, that was a that was a bad Omni Slash by Artis. I mean, it was there were two heroes. It was, well played, heroes. By it was well played by Arke, of course, but still, he shouldn't have gone for it. I mean, he, the only thing he did was putting him into a bad spot. He couldn't kill anybody, even if he would kill the Skyros, it wouldn't have mattered. And Oxus isn't being popped mid lane plus silence. Goddamn. Okay, Phoenix is not following up on the dive. Yeah, you don't need to. But, yeah. Don't need to. So this should turn into a tier 2 tower. Roshan is back up. And you kind of feel like Alliance would have loved to have Exorcism to go and sneak that one out. But I think it's going to go the way of Hellraisers again. Artez is actually running down there right now. Mask of Madness, Healing Ward. He can solo it up. Nope. Goes into the Ancients. That's okay. I mean, HR, I think, they're a bit surprised that they lost the fight. But it's just unfortunate Omni Slash, I guess. And then he was in the middle of the base and Juggernaut died instantly. Phoenix got a big ultimate off with nobody being able to cancel because he shot off two fire spirits onto the SF. Yeah, that's a bit hard. Gorod's on the hunt towards Pyke. He's got Blink ulti. But Pyke had really fast and he's got a TP out just in time. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. A bit closer than I expected. So, Loda, you know, winning that fight. Let's have a look at the uh, the damage it's done to Hellraisers. Their 10k lead has dropped to, to about two and a half. So 7,500 swing pretty much there with over a 10,000 swing of experience going the way of Alliance. So that put Lodov up to the Midas. It's now given him an Ogre Club. Getting close to that BKB. Over on Mad, you see his BKB is being built up as well with an Ag... Oh, no, no. He's got Aghanim Scepter. Sorry. He finishes his Aghanims, actually, as Nico has a Shiva's Guard. There's some big old items being picked up here by the Radiant and Pycat. I know that you love that Death Prophet build where you go, you'll set it into, you know, Heart, then Shiva's, or BKB. Do you think he's going to go for that good old school build with 3.4k saved up? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's, I think it's Shiva's guard. It's either one of the two. Maybe just casual vitality booster so he doesn't get burst down that easily. Sometimes we see Rod of Atos. I mean, would have been a good choice if like, the enemy team would have a hero like Slava, for example, then you can kite him all around all day. But Juggernaut, you can break out of it by Manta with Blade Fury. SF can, has got Manta style as well. I don't know, can you actually break out of Atos? I just. Maybe I, I'm just spotting bullshit here. I'd assume so, but I'm not yeah. sure. It's one of those items you don't it see too often. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's purgeable. But um, I'm not too sure. Or Dispellable, I should say, with Manta style. No, it's not a purge. But I'm, I'm not 100%. The Roshan will be scouted out here. Roshan, 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 my big buddy. Alliance, you need to smoke up. You need to react to this because it's going to drop pretty quickly. Artes slicing and dicing the yeah, big Yeah, there's man. no way they're going to be in, in time. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. She's dead. She? Oh, yeah. Roshan's a lady. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I never noticed her. <laughs> I have no idea. Sometimes I do wonder, you know, whether whether Roshan does have a gender. Mod golems, do they have genders? I, I'm, I'm never too sure. Because you look at heroes like Puck, who is actually defined as not having a gender, because it's from, you know, Midsummer's Night Dream, where Puck the fairy dragon is, is asexual. A, lo a lot of the heroes don't really have a defined gender. Viper, you know, he sounds a little bit manly, but it could be a, a lady who smokes. You know, you're never quite sure what some of these sort of animal-based heroes or creeps or anything like that really are underneath their skin. Yeah. Meanwhile, the radiant <laughs> Meanwhile base. in the game. <laughs> yeah, racks are falling. No, uh, there is a glyph. There is a glyph. Nico jumps in. Dread tries the cheeky little bar strike onto that dive, but he's not going to get it. Artez has already popped his. Uh, okay, that supernova was a bit awkward. Dial. Huh. They have no supernova. Huh. I, th I think that's bad, right? I, I think that's definitely <laughs> not good. Artez, but no. Overgrowth's going to stop them. The Exorcism's doing a ton of damage, but Dread! The Epicenter! With a, with a static storm as well. They rip through three. Instantly buy back now on the Slaughter and Phoenix, but Pycad, where are you going now? Dead for a minute. Loader. Um, seems to be the choice. Defending your base is not going to be an easy, easy thing to do as Dread jumps forward, looks for the blink stun, but he gets stunned up himself. Lit it's okay. And living armor will heal him back up to full. We Gucci boys. I mean, Alliance, I think they expanded two buybacks, so Phoenix and Slaughter, yes. Yeah. But if, if Death Prophet dies with Exorcism, you're screwed. That, that was daytime. Uh, sorry, no, no. That was nighttime. That's when Night Stalker is meant to be chasing people down and finding kills and helping his team. That, that's when Night Stalker is meant to be the strongest with Aghanim Scepter giving them vision. They just do not have the team fight control to do it. 
Dragon's <laughs> played an exceptional game on the Sandy, I've got to say. Goddamn, you know, Static Storms have been uh, sometimes a little awry. He's thrown them out and missed a little bit, but the ones he's needed to hit have landed. Yeah. That really has been the case overall, and they yeah, they did expend ages. Uh, probably, maybe they back off right now, but they still know there's no exorcism. So even if Pike it comes back, a bit undecided as it seems with HR. Well, what have they still got? Aegis Immortal is, is gone. They've got no cheese because that was the what second Roshan. So it looks like they'll just uh, proxy push a little bit into the ranks and back themselves up. Maybe smoke once amplify damage is gone. Actually, they'll smoke themselves up. Uh, Sans. The uh, Disruptor as Artez, Omni Slash, Omni -slash. fine, silence up and Concussive Shot slows him down. Magica might now look to turn things back on him as Matter Styles on cooldown, Godam. Static Storm is off Double cooldown, crush. but when you stand up you can't cast anything. Good overgrowth down from Gorez as here oh, comes the nice. Supernova. Great placement, but he's still going to die. Loaded oh. tries to crush, will catch one. Oh, Magica mouthing it up against Gorez, but now Leech Seed down, healing them all back up. Juggernaut, he died and brought back. Loader trapped. No route of escape, and that's a death with no buyback available. Alliance looking down and out. The Yule Scepter Magica Epicenter just for you. Dread says goodbye. Do 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 do. Yep, and that's gonna be a GG call indeed. So Alliance with the support Night Stalker, Slada, Chromeless lineup, unfortunately, I guess, uh, didn't really work out. I mean, the Asia just they upped the pace of the games really, really fun. Highly, and uh, overall dread on the Sound King just outstanding performance. Even in the last fight, getting a double ball strike off there to stop the back lines from from Alliance. And in the end, HR, it's going to be a 2 0 victory for them. So Alliance looks like Hellraisers. They are their bane of their existence so far. Oh, they yeah. can't beat Secret, but they can't beat HR. That, that was super rough for them. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this two game series. That was a 2 0 victory for Hellraisers over Alliance right now. So, Alliance, they no longer have the option of tying up with Bird and United up at the top of their group stages. I've been Durka here in the JD Studios. You can check me out on Facebook and Twitter at Durka Dota. Send me, send me your love, your hate, whatever you want to do, your, your ambivalence if you don't really care too much. Flesh, thanks for joining me once again. It's been a pleasure. Any any closing words, shout outs, anything like that? Well, please no more DDoS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Please no more DDoS. Good night, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, tomorrow morning, Toffees will be casting the VP game qualifiers. I'm going to have a little bit of a break. We have DK going up against Energy Pacemaker, which is a really important match. They're currently tied up at the top of their group. And we also have Newbie Young. Oh, my memory. Newbie Young playing against Braveheart, I believe. Let me check. Yes, 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 yes. Newbie Young against Braveheart. If that's a draw, we have a four-way tie in group number two. So two pretty important games over there tomorrow morning. 10 a.m. CEST here on Join Dota Red. Make sure you check that out. Toffees will be taking you through all of that. Once again, I've been Durka. Good night. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. See you, uh, see you on Sunday. It's, it's Friday today, right? Yeah. See you yeah. <laughs> well I, I'm losing track of time, man. See you guys on Sunday with the VP game full-on event. We've got eHome and IG and all the big teams from China playing in that one. I think Slash, you'd, you'll want to join me for that. Yeah, why not? Sweet. Let's get it on, boys. Right, so good night, everyone. I'm, I'm going to stop rambling now. I've, I've done my plugs. See you guys next time.